Well, good evening, the Ustream world. My name is Mike Martin. I'm with Casio America, and I'm here tonight to do our second clinic here on the Privia Pro PX5S. Um, there's a chat window. If you haven't found it on the Ustream page over to the right-hand side of the uh, video, there's a chat window. Open that up and uh, do participate. Uh, your questions do impact what you see and hear tonight uh, with the PX5S. Um, I am going to start a little bit with just uh, a review of some of the things that we covered in the first clinic. I'll maybe go a little bit more in depth. And uh, uh, great to see everybody on the chat list. So uh, I'm going to try it. You guys are, are joking around. For those of you watching this on Ustream, uh, excuse me, on YouTube, uh, you're probably you're watching the recorded version of this uh, uh, video cast. Uh, this is the kind of thing that we do uh, about monthly on products like the Privia Pro that we have here and uh, our XW synthesizers. So do stay tuned uh, to places like Casio Music Gear, um, our Facebook page, also also called Casio Music Gear, where you can get information about these types of events. Uh, much of the group I recognize from some of the names. Um, if you are a PX5S user or you're considering being one, uh, there's a very active community on the Casio PX5S users group uh, created by, by uh, you know, one of our users, Scott Hamlin in Florida. So very active group, uh, Casio Music Forums, other place to ask questions. That's casiomusicforums.com. So uh, I will begin. Um, the PX5S, you know, a stage piano that we launched back in uh, January of, uh, of this year, and began shipping just a few months ago is a pretty remarkable product. Um, 25 pound, 88 note weighted action stage piano. And there's several things that make this product unique. First of all, uh, it is a uh, phenomenal controller keyboard. It can handle up to uh, four sounds at once that can be zoned across the keyboard in different ways. Um, the grand piano sounds. are phenomenal um, and lots of attention to detail with those and uh, you guys out on the Ustream um, let me know how the volume levels are of my voice in relation to the uh, piano and we can make some some quick compensation in the audio levels here but um, so great piano sounds the piano sounds in Privia are delivered uh, by an engine we call AIR, which means Acoustic and Intelligent Resonator. And that means, you know, Casio has developed a specific um, chip specifically to create, uh, to create the music that you're hearing. Uh, it's designed to do these piano samples in a way that makes these sounds extremely dynamic. So you don't hear uh, velocity switching when you when you go from a, a soft dynamic um, to a to a harder dynamic. So you can make those changes. I'm going to bring the piano up just a bit in the mix. Next time, you got to remember to position the mixer a little little closer. All right. So um, and for those of you you know that don't have a PX5S, one of the the nice details that this engine delivers are things like uh, um, uh, damper resonance. So just an example, I'll turn this screen away so you can see what I'm doing here on the keyboard. I've taken our, our, our default classic grand piano sound uh, using the slider over here on the left. I can turn off the reverb very easily. So I just wanted to show you that if I now take the piano and I play it with um, the damper pedal, we get all of the um, nuance and detail that our chip AIR will simulate. Uh, so it really gives you um, a nice um, representation of the acoustic piano. There's other subtle details, including things like um, sympathetic resonance. So if I have a chord like this, um, it fades out, and I strike other notes on the keyboard those notes will sympathetically vibrate. So incredible attention to detail with those piano sounds. And I'm going to make just one more quick volume adjustment. 
That should give me enough headroom here. So I mentioned that this is a, a four zone product and so we can take piano sounds such as this and layer them with other instruments. Uh, there's several ways to do it. Of course we have presets that are done where you can just uh, with one button press um, grab your piano. Um, and have a sound that's that's beautifully layered together. So there's presets like that, but I also wanted to show you very quickly that we could take an instrument um, like one of the pianos, and I'm going to switch to um, maybe a variation on the Reverb Grand. That's a preset you can be that you can download. I guess I'll do a um, brighter version of that. So, so. If, you're, if you've got a, uh, a one zone turned on, if you look at the screen, let me turn my second camera back on here. It shows right there on the screen, on the right hand side of the display, it says Z1. That means zone one is turned on. And using the buttons to the left of the display, I can switch between my other zones. So there's two, two buttons here, I'd have to pan the camera up a little bit. Now, camera's not going to get over there. Just to the left, the display labeled zone plus and minus. And I can switch back and forth between those two zones. Once I have a, uh, I'm just trying to get that camera to focus there. There we go. Uh, once I've selected another zone, if I hit the zone plus and minus button simultaneously, I can turn on that second zone. So it doesn't get much faster than that to, to create a layer, um, to add a second sound. So I can take that uh, acoustic piano sound on zone one and layer it with an electric piano on zone two. Okay, and so you could quickly and easily add another zone, uh, go to sermon three, turn it on, and add another sound. I can choose from the category buttons over on the left hand side of the keyboard. Uh, there's uh, tones listed here by category, pianos, electric pianos, strings, brass. So in the strings category, let me turn that display back on, you know, I can grab a string sound or maybe a um, pad type sound to layer back behind these two sounds that I already have going. So. So once you've created a layer, a combination of sounds that you like, uh, you, can, you can save this. You can call it anything you want. There are 100 locations for what we call stage settings uh, up there on the screen. You can title this, uh, you know, right now it's, it's called a Reverb Grand. We're just kind of uh, trying to explain what that sound is. But if you're a gigging musician, uh, you need a, a layer like this for a particular song. You know, put the song title in the screen and just want to quickly cover how to uh, save sounds. It comes up uh, fairly often. So what I've created with these three sounds is, is a three-layer stage setting. Um, so I'm going to save the stage setting itself. Um, so it's asking me on the top right-hand corner of the screen, um, in bold, it says, write stage sets 9-0. So that's the location number. And I can use the plus and minus keys to choose any location number uh, where I want to store this. If I press the cursor down button, now, if you look closely at the display, you'll see that there's a little flashing cursor um, line underneath the letters there on the screen. I can use the plus and minus buttons over on the right-hand side, but for a faster way, I can use the knobs over on the left and actually title something using the knobs. So um, I should be looking at uh, the keyboard and not the video display. It'd be a little a little faster for me. So um, I actually use a combination of both hands uh, and just quickly scroll through. Um, and there we go. So I can save this new preset and I can put it anywhere I want. So that's a common question that comes up on the forums is, well, you know, I, I've created something, how do I save it? Just hit the right button, choose stage setting, 
cursor down to name it. And that's the part that some people seem to, uh, to miss. So cursor down and name that stage setting. So uh, unless there's other questions, I'm going to move on to some of the other questions that came up on the forums and on the Facebook users group before, um, before the clinic was posted. So we, we, uh, when we do these types of events, when we announce them, um, I ask for questions from you guys, what kinds of things you would like to see. Um, so I make sure we get your questions answered. Maybe if you couldn't um, actually watch the video live, we'll cover it later on. So uh, the next question um, comes up is uh, about hex layers and, and editing those and creating sounds and you know what kinds of techniques did I use to um, make some of the presets that are in here. So um, in order to show that, in fact, uh, I'm going to dial in uh, one of the preset hex layer sounds that has the sliders over here assigned to each of um, the layer volumes. So because when I'm making a hex layer sound, um, it's having these sliders accessible to control the volume levels of each of the parts is really crucial for me uh, in being able to mold and, sh and shape that sound. So I usually start with a hex layer preset. Um, those are generally laid out uh, with last number seven in the stage settings list, so 071727 all the way up. And uh, so this is, you know, one, one of my favorites that's in the machine. And this one, like I said, has volume control. great filter control as well. So I've got some, some tools available here that when I get into editing, um, I can have quick access to those things to, to sculpt this sound. So now that I have, um, you know, I've chosen a stage setting that gives me some controls, I'm just going to find a blank hex layer to work with. So um, I'm just using the up and down arrow keys and I'm going to find a uh, if you look on the screen here, an unlabeled uh, hex sound that's in the user bank. Uh, one of the questions that's popping up online is, can you use hex layers with organs? Uh, well, I'll show you here in a minute what kinds of um, things are available when you get into creating your own. So um, the answer is yes, uh, but we're gonna, uh, I'll show you how deep this can get. So I'm going to hit the edit button over on the right-hand side. Uh, I've actually got a little screenshot here just so you guys can see. Uh, those of you that aren't used to the interface of the PX5S, third button from the right-hand side on the bottom row is labeled edit. So you can, uh, you press edit and the first thing it's going to ask is, well, what are you editing? Are you editing things in regards to the stage setting? And that would be like your, uh, your key range of this, the entire component um, or its effects mix and uh, its MIDI channel, things like that will um, appear under the stage setting. But we're going to actually edit the sound itself. And I started from a blank template. Um, so I'm going to go to the, the tone section. And you see now it says we're editing a hex layer. Now, for a lot of people, um, to get the hang of, of hex layers, um, I do recommend that you take a look at our editor. Um, I'm actually in an edit mode, so I'll have to, to exit out so you guys can see it. Um, but let me just pull up the editor. So there we go. There is a free Mac and PC editor available for download that allows you to uh, select sounds and edit them visually on the screen. And a hex layer sound, simply put, is, uh, I'm going to grab a user, I'm going to grab a blank one here on the screen. Just any, any blank hex layer sound. It's simply put, it's a single sound made up of six components. And now on the screen, you guys can see um, the six columns that we have on the bottom of the screen. And all the parameters associated with that sound. So there's a lot of different things. So each component has an envelope. Each component, uh, an envelope for the filter, an envelope for the amp section. And you can visually check those out um, there in the editor. 
Uh, personally, myself, I prefer um, to edit on the front panel. Uh, for me, I just find it um, a little bit more immediate. It's just my working style. Um, I've been um, probably involved in the PX5S a little bit longer than you guys, so it. Uh, I'm used to just quickly going through the front panel, and I'll show you as many shortcuts as I can when you're editing sound. So um, we're back to this blank, blank layer. Um, question that's showing up online is, um, will the editor be available uh, for Linux? Um, uh, currently, I'm not aware of any plans for that. Currently, it's Mac and PC. There's been some requests. Are you know, are we going to do the release the editor uh, for iPads? Um, I, I can't promise any of those things right now. So uh, Mac and PC only at the moment. So back to the hex edit section. Uh, this is the main screen that you come to, and these are the things that um, are sort of in common for all six layers of this program. Um, it's overall volume, uh, things like uh, is it using the insert effects, is Portamento on um, the detuning for layers, and so on. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, first I want to explain this first parameter that's at the top of the screen. Usually by default it is, it is set to on. And what that means, it says init by wave, meaning initialize by wave. So when you go in and select a component here, um, and you choose a particular waveform, if that parameter, init by wave, is turned on. When you select a waveform from the 439 different available choices in the machine, it's going to choose some default settings associated with that kind of sound. Um, so if you were to choose a string sound, um, you might get uh, an envelope that's a little bit slower on the front end. Um, so if it you know, just says... So I just selected this particular string program, so let's just go take a look at its amplitude envelope and see if it has a little bit of a, oops, I got to look at what I'm doing on the front panel, not look at the video camera, it makes it a little bit easier. So you can see that by default, um, this sound had a particular envelope associated with it with a little bit slower attack time um, and a... Uh, initial level that is, um, you know, was about uh, three quarters of the way up. So that's what that parameter means on on the front. Um, initialize by wave. So depending on what kind of sound you're creating, um, you can. Um, and it depends, you know, what direction you're going. You might want to have this parameter on or off. So um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select, I don't know, just something. I'm kind of going to pick something by random here and see. Um, you know, there's all kinds of content as you go through here, um, different waveforms that have been used throughout Casio products. And, you know, I'm going to show you something that, you know, maybe, you know, here's a sound that musically at first you might be going, you know, what? that's kind of an unusual bell sound. Um, you know, why would I use something like that? And with the power that we have here, uh, you can turn a sound like this into something um, very interesting and unique. And maybe, you know, it's just one component that's in the background of your overall sound. So, uh, you know, I've got this little, this, uh, this bell sound. Um, one of the things I might want to do to it first um, is add a filter. And the PX5S has uh, multiple filter choices. Band pass, high pass, several different low pass filters, each of which are going to change the, you know, the 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 tone the tone of this bell in a different way. Um, I'm going to choose a, a band pass, which is a little bit uh, a different kind of sound. And one of the things I'm going to do with this, because I'm looking for um, this particular, area, maybe to just be in the background. So. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that my LFO depth for this particular layer is up. Because what I'm going to do is um, scroll back to exit out to my first layer, or the first level in my hex edit program. And now I'm going to apply an LFO um, to this bell, just to give you a little idea of, uh, of what we can do to that bell sound. So we can change its speed. 
its rate. And so, you know, now we've got something that's, you know, got a little bit of animation to it, but we're going to take it a step further. Each layer, in addition to an amplitude envelope and a filter envelope, also has what's called a pitch envelope. So we can actually make this sound change over time. Okay, so depending on where I set this initial level and the time value next to it, we can have this sound drop in pitch over a particular rate or time. Okay, so we can, um, I'm going to go back and adjust my filter a little bit. Kind of dial that in just so it's in the background. So, um, you know, one of the ways I learned to, to program sounds um, is by taking existing sounds apart, layer by layer. So I would encourage you to, to go into the factory presets and, you know, start turning zones off and then going into existing programs and, and turning layers off one by one. And, and um, you know, as you peel those layers apart and then put them back together, uh, you can learn how some of these things were done. And that's, that's how I learned. Um, I just like to learn how, how things work. Um, so, you know, this sound you know, by itself, you know, kind of an unusual little effect, but now if I start um, adding other components to that, and I'm going to go and turn on another layer, that's where things, you know, can, can get interesting. And, you know, this might evolve or change. I am literally uh, uh, just sort of uh, improvising here as far as a fresh sound, just to give you... Um, an idea of what is possible here. So, so, so I grabbed a you know a particular pad sound um, that's in here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of an envelope to it. So my attack time will make that fade in. My release time will make that fade out. So I'm quickly discovering that that bell sound is just too loud in comparison to this pad. So I'm just reaching over and adjusting the volume. And you hear when that's just bell sounds in the background, it can just create a little bit of animation to the patch that we're going for. So. I'll turn that bell up just a little bit more. So, you know, that's two layers. I've got uh, four more that I can use on just this one program, and we can just continue to mix and match different things and blend them together. So um, another thing I might do in a, on a program like this um, is take a layer and put it in a different transposition. Maybe put it... Um, find something that's a little bit... There is something vocal in nature. Take a sound like that and uh, maybe pitch it up. Um, so in this case, it's seven semitones up, which is a fifth. And you know we can create some nice textures this way. So I'm, again, I'm going to add kind of a similar envelope um, to this vocal sound now. So one of the things we're hearing as we continue to add layers here is that um, that LFO that I added to the bell is also affecting the other layers. Um, so if I go to my filter section and scroll down to the bottom, I can turn the depth off for those second two layers. So I hope you get the idea here that it's you know it's it's a lot of experimentation. Take the bell up an octave. And you can create some really interactive and sounds with a lot of motion. Um, you know, I'm I'm personally into a lot of the synth sounds, but you can create all kinds of acoustic sounds. Um, as some of the examples that are in the machine, such as 
um, number zero five. This orchestral program, that's a single hex layer program uh, where I have different components on each of the layers. So strings, choirs, all of those things come in at different levels depending on how I play the keyboard. Um, question that's coming from online is, well, can I use piano sounds and other waveforms in these? Absolutely. There are, um, you know, f like I said earlier, about 430-some uh, waveforms available. So I'll show you quickly how I did uh, another sound that I just posted online yesterday, in fact. Um, so I'm back to a blank hex layer sound. Again, the name of the stage setting at this point is irrelevant because I, the, the zone that I'm using right now, I'm choosing a, an empty uh, blank program. So I'm going to hit Edit, go to Tone. In this case, because I'm going to choose a piano, um, I do want um, that Initialize by Wave turned on. And I can scroll at the very beginning of the list, you can actually see all four layers of our piano sound uh, listed here individually, as well as other um, other noises that can be used to add um, elements to our sound. So, you know, when you hear the pianos um, raw like this, um, it gives you a little bit of idea of how much uh, contouring and power is going into the the, the presets that we've made. But um, real quick. Take a piano sound like this, layer one, um, and it's grand piano three left. So our pianos are recorded in stereo. I can go to my second layer and grab grand piano three right. I would have to go to my amp page here and pan those left. Go to my other layer and right and accordingly. And now we have something that sounds much more like like our grand piano sound. But that's just one component. It's still, it's still dynamic by default, but uh, perhaps not as dynamic as our, um, our full-voiced piano sounds that are in the machine. But one other trick that I used the other day in this new preset, um, I'm not going to pan them so far apart, is I took one of the layers here, um, and I went to the, one of the two layers, and I went to the pitch page. And typically when people do like ragtime pianos and things like that, they'll just, you know, they'll, they'll throw one of the layers up or down out of tune, you know, so. And that'll give you a decent, uh, you know, decent ragtime type piano. So you get the idea. Um, I took it, I did the one that I did that I posted the other day, um, I, I took a different approach um, one of the things about using just like detuning uh, two different layers like this is um, it's equally out of tune across the whole range of the machine. Um, and, well, a piano doesn't go out of tune equally across the whole range. So one of the things that I did um, is I changed the, um, the pitch follow, um, which defaults to 64, um, if I change that just one step, and you see below where it says key follow, um, the bass note is C4, that's middle C. Um, as I uh, play middle C, it's in tune. But the further I move away from middle C, things start to get really out of tune. Um, and what I basically did was duplicated this type of thing for every range of uh, every octave of the machine to get a really uh, natural, uh, naturally detuned uh, ragtime piano. So sounded even better than, than this one I'm messing with right now. So um, there are all kinds of tools within hex layers. I recommend that, again, you get in, um, if, if you're interested in learning about creating your own sounds, uh, start with what's there. There's a lot of stuff built into the machine. Take those components apart and, and see what's in there, and, and uh, you know, soon you'll be well on your way to, uh, to making, uh, you know, making some of your own.
So this this particular preset ice castles actually uses some of the techniques that we just were talking about. Um, I've got two layers, each with a slightly different filter, but layers three and four are transposed. So simply by taking a layer and transposing it up an octave or a fifth, or I think one of them is actually an octave and a fifth up, yeah. you can get some, some really nice textures. And uh, you know, there's many, many examples of, of that within the machine. So um, I'm going to move on to one of the other big questions that came up on the forums, which was the arpeggiator. And using the arpeggiator, um, how do you program it? Um, you know, how, how, uh, how do some of these parameters work? And I realized tonight's session might be a little deeper. Uh, if you're watching this video, this is the first Casio Live Clinic that you've seen. Um, do find the you know, clinic number one on the YouTube channel. And you can see, you know, the the video that was a little bit more of an introduction to the PX5S. So we are going a little bit in depth tonight to cover some of the questions that have been asked on forums. So um, the arpeggiator on the PX5S, there's a switch over on the uh, left-hand side of the machine, just uh, uh, just next to the system settings button, the second button, top row from the left, uh, arpeggiator select. So um, the PX5S probably has, in my opinion, one of the most sophisticated arpeggiators that's ever been put into um, a, a keyboard before. It's extremely programmable. Um, it can create some amazing animated parts. And uh, I'm going to just show you some of the components that make this thing work. Uh, and, you know, again, if you're new to this, I would recommend, again, that you, you start with perhaps some of the the preset uh, programs that are on the machine or stage settings that are on the machine that that utilize the arpeggiator. And generally speaking, um, it's stage settings that end in number 8. So 0, 8, 1, 8, um, 2, 8, all of these things um, uh, will utilize the arpeggiator or multiple arpeggiators. Um, in different ways. So we have several different arpeggiators going um, on this particular program. So to keep things simple, I'm going to go um, to one of my favorite and actually kind of a, a very simple uh, preset on the PX5S called Polysynth. You know, it's one of those sounds that, uh, you know, if you need to play jump, uh, which I'm not going to, uh, it's perfect for that kind of thing, but it's a great, uh, great all-purpose sort of 80s sawtooth uh, sound. And there's lots of real-time control with the knobs to shape this sound. Lots of filter control using the sliders. Detuning. And effects. I mean, there's so much stuff happening in this particular program. Um, you can turn it into, uh, you know, something completely different from where we started. But I'm going to go back, now that I've shown you that, go back to square one just with our, our, our basic um, polysynth sound and explain some of the things that we can do with the arpeggiator. So uh, I'm going to um, press the arpeggi arpeggiator button on the top left here uh, and then hold it down to get into the arpeggiator um, selection component of, of the PX5S. Um, there are 100 presets in here uh, that allow you to, to get in and experiment. Um, oops can't do that with uh, the slider. I have to use the up and down buttons here. Um, so there's 100 preset arpeggiator patterns, and there's room for 900 of your own. Um, so there's plenty of room um, to create your own patterns. Uh, we are creating more. Um, I love the name on the first one, Screw Up, uh, which is a very unique one. Um, so in fact, um, we're going to start with this one. 
and um, it's pretty unique in the way it works. And again, when I talk about you know taking layers apart and learning how this works, um, you know one of the first things with a, with an arpeggio like this is to understand what's going on. It is to slow it down. Um, so you can use the tempo button on the front panel and slow it down. Um, I'm actually, instead of that, I'm going to show you another parameter. So while I'm on the arpeggiator uh, selection screen here, if I hit the edit button, this is where um, you get access to all of the, the cool stuff. Um, so in the parameter section, uh, this is where you can determine um, the note type or the step size. So if you want it to be quarter notes, or you want it to be eighth note triplets, or sixteenth notes, or all, all the way up to thirty-second notes. You can also determine um, the length of the note. So you can get in here and change if it's playing the full value, note value, or if it's very staccato. So depending on what kind of effect you're looking for. Um, I'm going to go back and select eighth notes. Um, if you scroll down, by the way, there's even more. Um, you can create uh, swings by offsetting the groove parameter. Okay, and you can go either direction. Um, groove type down below um, determines uh, if one of those notes is a little bit shorter than the other. Um, so it has control over, to, you know, to make that groove a little bit more pronounced. And the last parameter here, well, actually it keeps going, but um, for now what I want to show you is the, the velocity. And so uh, by default with this particular preset, the arpeggiator has a fixed velocity value. So regardless of how hard or soft I play the keys, um, it's going to play um, at this value. Uh, but there's other choices. If you scroll down to the bottom um, and um, you can actually say, well, it's going to play at the velocity that I play the keyboard. So depending on, on how hard or soft you dig into the keyboard. Um, so lots of control. But now let's get into, um, actually, to simplify things, um, I'm going to take our arpeggiator pattern, which is 16 steps, and shorten it down. Uh, well, let's just do four steps for now. All right, so we're going to work with just four of our available 16 steps, and we're going to get in and edit those steps. Now, uh, this the parameters here are described in detail in um, the tutorial manual that we have online. I'm right now. I'm just playing middle C. I'm just playing one note. And you can hear that um, it is uh, jumping up and down in octaves. So um, I can use, again, to the left of the display, those zone plus and minus buttons, or it's also labeled step plus and minus. I can move back and forth between these steps. Now the type that is listed here, um, this is listed, each of these types are listed in the manual. And I would suggest you, you do check um, the tutorial manual out. Um, it will describe what each of these steps do, um, but it determines, you know, if you're playing a chord, um, how those notes uh, are going to work with each other. For example, if I were to set this to a value of P2, what that is actually saying, I'm going to set every one of these to P2. And I'm going to set, oops, I'm on step four. So go back the other direction, step two, step one. So two, three, and four. All of my steps are set to a value of P2, except the first one. I'm going to set it to a value of P5. With the type set to P5, what that is saying is I can play up to five notes at once, and step one will play a five-note polyphonic chord. So I'm going to play a five-note chord. So you can hear that the first chord that I play is playing um, the full chord. The second step is only playing two notes. So 
Each of these types determines what happens on each of the steps. And again, if you're playing a chord, it will determine whether or not that note is happening, um, you know, where all those notes happen in, in relation to the first note that you play. So a lot of control to create some really interesting sounds. Um, so I'm going to go back and, and sort of reset things here and uh, show you some other components. Um, we go to step two. So I can actually transpose any of these steps. So if I set step two up to be up to a um, seventh, or excuse me, seven steps, we can hear it jumping up a fifth. And we could go to um, the next step and adjust the velocity of that note. So to answer one of the questions that came up in earlier in the um, chat window, this is how the on-the-run sequence was created. One of the demonstration presets that's on the forums for download is basically I figured out the, the pattern of uh, notes and sort of, you know, uh, programmed them in here step by step. So you just, with a few quick changes, you know, we can get a... You know, an interesting pattern, speed it up, and that, you know, isn't exactly the dark side of the moon program, but there are you know, pattern, but that's how um, that type of pattern is made. And simply by changing the transposition or note values for each of those steps. One last thing I'm going to uh, show you with the arpeggiator before we move on is... Uh, the fourth parameter over here on the left hand side where it says control and this is a very unique thing about the arpeggiator here is that for each of these steps not only can you have a note but you can also have a controller and you know what's that what's that mean um, so just like we can manipulate a sound with a knob or a slider um, you can have each step of the arpeggiator doing that so if I go back to my main um, parameter page here and scroll down. Uh, here is where it says uh, my control track. and I can choose what I want it to do, whether it's on or off. So if the control track is set to on, I can, I can have controller values happening in addition to my notes. Another interesting thing that can happen here is if I set this to only, it won't play any notes at all. It will only uh, do controller movements. So um, we'll come back to that. Well, why not? Let's go ahead and do that. So I can choose what those controller movements are going to be. Um, in fact, I'm going to go in here and select. Um, I do know that 74 is filter. At least I believe it's filter. We're going to find out here in a moment here. Um, a list of these is in the manual, what each of the controllers are. Um, so now that I've set that for each of my steps, I can just turn the fourth knob here, by the way, when I'm in the editing screen here. I'm setting a different filter value for each of those steps. So let's see what happens when I play. So my sound is changing based on the controller values I put in those four steps. So suddenly, uh, you know, my stereo sound's got all of this, this cool animation to it. Another one you might use um, is... Well, I'm going to go down here and choose... Uh, I'm going to turn it back on. Here's another thing that I've used several times in the stock presets, if I can remember my controller numbers here. There we go. So uh, I'm going to go back and edit these steps and show you what I'm doing. So for each of these steps, I'm going to set a different value. Left and right. So... You can create for each of these steps. I set it to controller 10, which is pan position. So we can have it start in the left speaker, then go to the right speaker, 
go back to the left speaker, go back to the right speaker. So as you check out some of the, again, the factory presets and you hear something going on, um, this type of animation, that's where it might be coming from is the, is the um, arpeggiator. So a really amazing tool that you can use to create um, textures and elements to your sounds. And again, as you go back and select some of these factory presets and you're wondering how that stuff is done. Um, you know, it might be a delay effect. Um, but it might also be a controller in that arpeggiator. And uh, we're going to have libraries of downloadable arpeggiator presets that you can use for different things. Um, one of you know, the simplest things that I generally do, uh, when we go back to Polysynth, we're back to square one where we started. I'm going to turn the arpeggiator back on. Um, just grab a, go back to that, that same pattern labeled screw up. Um, and, you know, I prefer, well, it just depends on the, on the music you're doing, but for a lot of things that I do, um, I like the pattern just to be going slower. So we can take that, slow it down to eighth notes. Um, and then just by adding a little bit of delay effect in the mix, You know, suddenly, again, you've got all these these cool and unique textures. So, uh, personally, I have a lot of the, just the factory patterns where I've only changed. The only thing I've changed is the um, the note value from uh, 16th notes to 8th notes, and I've saved it that way, uh, just to give me something rhythmically uh, a little easier to work with. So, kind of both, you know, just scratching the surface um, on uh, the arpeggiator, and um, some of the techniques that can be used in there. Um, so many powerful things um, here in the Privia Pro PX5S. Um, by the way, yeah, that delay effect uh, in that particular program, um, somebody was mentioning tempo, um, is already synced to tempo. So that's why it sounded uh, to very cool within um, that particular preset. And that's one of the changes we made uh, with the version 1.10 firmware update um, is that um, from the piano sounds, um, different presets that you select, that generally speaking, um, the, the, the delay effects are going to be set to tempo. So if I go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm just using the tap tempo button here. Okay, and so I actually have it set to an eighth note or uh, a dotted eighth rhythm. So, but if I play, at the tempo I was originally playing, we get that nice rhythmic pattern. So almost, uh, I can't say all of them, but the majority of presets that are um, set up already have um, the system delay effect locked to tempo. So, just a, a little hidden extra. So I'm going to go next to uh, one of the other big common questions, uh, which is the phrase recorder. The PX5S has, uh, in addition to all of these tools and the ability to, to load or layer sounds and control them in real time, uh, we have a uh, a phrase recorder that has all kinds of applications. Uh, we just heard a moment ago how you can use an arpeggiator to create, um, you know, an animated, you know, component in a sound. Uh, but there's also this um, phrase gener or phrase recorder that you can use uh, to create other patterns. And uh, think of a phrase as a riff. Um, or, a, uh, I said pattern, uh, something like a drum pattern. So there's all kinds of applications. Generally speaking, as you go through the PX5S, presets ending in 9 utilize a phrase in some way. So um, uh, stage setting number 1-9 called Rock Concert. Uh, if I 
um, I'm going to unclick the arpeggiator button and turn off the phrase. It's just a, it's a, you know, organ patch with a, a guitar here in the left hand. Just uh, change my camera here. Yeah. You know. Okay, so we've got guitar and bass in the left hand, organ up here in the right hand. Um, but by default, this sound actually has the phrases turned on. So when I play here in the left hand, okay, and that's a you know it's a musical phrase that was played, and that phrase will trans transpose with me into different keys across across the uh, the lower range of the keyboard. Okay. Other examples of phrases in the machine um, are, are simple drum patterns. So in this uh, preset 09U2, uh, we have, if I play, play a key down here at the lower end of the keyboard, we just get a simple four on the floor with a hi-hat drum pattern. Okay. Uh, and that's combined in a different range of the keyboard with an arpeggiated guitar part. So one of the most common questions that comes up is, you know, I want to make a pattern. How do, how do I do that? Um, so I'm going to try um, to take you through that process. Um, and I'm going to go back to, to, you know, familiar ground for everybody. I'm going to go back to, you know, just the, the zero, zero stage setting and um, try and take you through step by step how I would, you know, create a phrase, uh, a drum pattern that would go along with, uh, with a stage setting. So... Um, I'm at the starting point, Concert Grand, um, and I want to create a drum pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do over on the left um, in my tone section is choose um, a drum kit. There's a number of different drum kits in the machine uh, um, across a variety of uh, genres, electronic kits, standard rock kits. So you can scroll through, I believe there's about 20 or so different kits that are in the machine and choose one. You know, that's, you know, what you're looking for stylistically. Um, just for fun, um, I put in one of the user drum kits, another downloadable preset um, that's available from CasioMusicForums.com. So this is a, a preset. We can edit the drum sounds and, and detune them and add different filters. And uh, this is a drum kit that I created. So uh, I'm going to take this and uh, let's create a phrase with it. Let's create a little drum pattern. Uh, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is hit the the phrase button. Um, it's showing me that uh, by default there's there's a you know there's a phrase selected. Um, I can choose a blank one. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, I am going to turn loop down below on. So I have a blank phrase. Um, Number 106, I you know, just chose it random. By the way, there's 900 user locations here, so you can create your own. I'm going to hit the phrase button one more time, and this is where I get my, my setup menu for recording. So um, we see on the screen that I'm creating a new phrase. The second parameter here is something called quantizing, uh, which is um, kind of autocorrect for our rhythm. So if your time isn't great, uh, you can use the quantize function here to snap notes to the nearest eighth note or sixteenth note, uh, whatever value is selected there. Um, I'll keep it set to sixteenth notes for now. And below, um, you can choose the, um, how many measures your phrase is going to be. Um, you can leave it to auto, which means uh, when you reach up and, uh, and hit the record button again to stop, that it will um, try and um, you know mark the end point for your phrase at that point. Uh, when doing drums, I like to go ahead and choose uh, a number of measures, two measures or four measures, because what I'm going to do here in a second is, is do some loop recording. So uh, I've chosen two measures. 
Uh, new phrase, I've set up my quantizing. I'm ready to go, I'm gonna hit the record button. So you see on the screen, boom, it went through my, it went through my two measures, I wasn't even ready. Oh my gosh, you know, uh, what's happened here? So uh, there are some preferences in regards to the way the phrase sequencer works. In the system settings menu, the button on the far top left hand corner of the screen, you can go down here and choose whether or not the phrase recorder has a metronome on or off or a guide beat. You can also determine whether or not it gives you a count in of one of one measure or not. Um, so that's what happened. I didn't have the pre-count turned on and my two measures went flying by. Um, that's okay. Um, I actually now, this is actually going to work in my benefit. I have a blank phrase that's two measures. So now if I hit the phrase button again, and instead of recording a new phrase, I'm going to set it in overdub mode. So the cool thing that's going to happen here is it's going to loop these two measures over and over and over again. So I just hit record and start. Two. Didn't get my downbeat. Now, I know where some of my sounds are at this point. I knew where my snare was. I knew basically where my hi-hat was. Um, I'm just going to hit uh, the, the record button to turn it off for a moment and maybe grab, you know, find out where another instrument sound is on the keyboard. Hit my phrase button again. I'm in overdub mode. And just hit that record button again. And I can keep adding to this. So that's just a you know a simple um, you know two measure loop. You know I can scroll through and and maybe find you know another sound to throw in there somewhere. Now I made a mistake. I played one of the wrong keys. So one cool thing I can do here is I can hold down the record button, and it will undo that last pass. Okay, so now I've created um, a two-measure loop. One of the questions that's showing up online is, is there a way to increase the volume of, of the guide beat? Um, not that I'm aware of. I don't believe so. Um, you know, one thing you could do with your first pass is, uh, you know, set it to quarter notes and, and record something else um, to um, automatically, um, you know, set it to quarter notes and just do a pass of two measures with just quarter notes. So... Um, yeah, I realize you guys can't see my hands. I apologize. I might actually be able to move one of these shots on the fly. Um, so let me just um, see if I can, if we have the technology to move the camera shot. And I don't believe I do. Not while it's in use. So let me tell you what. Let me switch to another camera angle, put my name up here on the screen while you guys come up with other questions. Let's see. Maybe I can. So for those of you maybe just joining in, this broadcast will be on um, YouTube. So if you missed the beginning portion, we will have that uh, the entire video online later on. No, it doesn't look like I can move it now that this, you know, the recording is in progress. So I apologize you guys can't see my, uh, the hands in this video, but uh, we'll, we'll get that worked out for future videos, absolutely. So, um, so uh, you know, if you want, I can do that whole thing again real quick. Um, but basically, uh, you know, I took 
a new phrase up on the screen. So here, I've got to show you one more time. And this is the way I like to do drum parts, is just have um, a two-measure loop that I can work with. You guys can still me hear? Yeah, okay. Uh, two-measure loop that I can work with. Um, and then hit the record button again and overdub within that two-measure loop. Doesn't like him. So loop recording you know, pretty cool that you can um, modify, um, or you can actually just you know put it in loop mode and create all that you know create a drum pattern to work with on the fly. So I'm going to save that. I hit the right button. Um, I'm going to um, just choose a location number. I can name it. And now let's see. Make sure you guys still have audio over here. There we go. Um, so uh, I have my phrase. Um, I've recorded it, but now I want to build a stage setting around this phrase. So um, what I'm going to do first is edit my stage setting and make sure that zone 1 is using this phrase. Whoops. So um, I've hit um, stage setting edit, zone edit. Um, now I'm going to controller edit. And this is where I can find the arpeggiator and phrase assignments for each of my zones. So this screen's a, a little bit confusing. Uh, take a look at the top right hand corner. It says one slash two. That means we're on page one of two. So for my first zone, and by the way, drums can only go on um, zone one, I can choose whether or not this is an arpeggio or a phrase. Once I've chosen that it's going to be a phrase, I need to go down to the second um, screen and choose which phrase it's going to be. So I did save it. I didn't take the time to name it under location 101. There it is. All right. So um, now when I play um, play the keyboard and my arpeggiator switch is on, oh, we're going to, um, and what you're hearing is, well, it doesn't sound quite right because I made one, one more crucial mistake. Back on this page, I need to set the original key of my phrase for drums to fixed. That way, um, w no matter which key I play on the keyboard, you see you know, any range of the keyboard at all, it plays that drum pattern. So phrases, yes, the question that's coming online, phrases will absolutely transpose like an arpeggio. Uh, the difference is an arpeggio, you know, I can play a C major chord or a C minor chord and the arpeggio will adapt. A phrase, however, is fixed. It's going to play the series of notes that's in the phrase and that series of notes will not change. Uh, they will just shift from key to key depending on what notes you're playing on the keyboard. So. So I've got a you know a pattern in here. Um, you know something I might do next um, is go and turn on a second zone. So I've exited out, turning on zone two by pressing those plus and minus buttons together, and I can just grab one of the um, you know the hex layer presets that's in here. Ah, so immediately we got a surprise is that this pad sound that I've selected here on the screen has an arpeggiator turned on. So each zone has an arpeggiator on off switch. It's back in that same place we just were. Go to zone edit, controller edit, scroll down to the bottom of the list, 
and there's a, the enable switch for sound two. So now I can, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off for zone three. Because now I'm going to go to zone three, turn it on, and choose maybe a piano sound. Ah, and um, actually I made it not a mistake, but uh, this is actually a characteristic of of this stage setting 0-0 is that zone 3 was set up by default to have a bass sound in case you wanted to quickly do a bass and piano split. So it was only working on the bottom range of the keyboard. So I'm going to back up and take you through this a little bit slower. I hit zone edit, mixer edit, scroll down, and this is where I will find the key range for this zone. So now when I play... The other thing that you'll notice is when I play the keyboard, switch cameras here again, is that the drum pattern starts uh, when I stop playing, the drum pattern stops. Uh, if you press, uh, you look at the top left of the keyboard, the system settings and arpeggiator select button also double as a hold switch. So if you press those two things together, the arpeggiator light will flash, and now the, con the um, drum pattern will continue to play even when I stop, um, when I stop playing the, key the physical keys on the keyboard. So a question that's coming in online is, can you set phrases to send out a specific MIDI channel? Absolutely. Um, the arpeggiators, the phrases for each of the zones, you have independent control whether those weren't zones work for internal sounds on the Privia PX5S or whether those phrases or arpeggiators or zones are triggering external instruments. So I'll show you quickly where that is happening um, in the stage setting edits. So I'm going to go to um, mixer edit, actually no, um, let me back up, zone edit and MIDI edit. And if I scroll down toward the bottom, uh, well first I've got, uh, pull up the other camera view for you. I can determine the MIDI um, external out channel for this zone. I can also choose whether the zone is using the internal sound generator or not. I can also determine whether it's using the USB out or the MIDI outs independently. So one amazing thing about um, Casio's new products like the PX5S and the XW series is that um, you can independently, I can say zone three, and you see the Z3 at the top, uh, maybe that's going out USB and I'm controlling um, a synthesizer on my iPad. And maybe zone two, um, I just want that going out the MIDI out. And so each of those zones can be independent completely. Um, and so, and with combined with internal sounds um, and external instruments. So if you're using external instruments down at the bottom, uh, you can even determine the bank and program changes for those external products. So um, great, great functionality for um, setting up external gear. So now I've got three zones. So I, you know, again, we could continue on this and combine other things that we learned tonight. Turn on zone four. Um, I'm going to grab uh, maybe something from the synth category. Well, there's one labeled arpeggio, so let's see. Press and hold that arpeggiator button. I'm going to change my pad. Press edit and change my arpeggiator pattern to eighth notes. You know what, that's no fun. Let's pick something, uh, how about instead of that synth sound, let's do a uh, guitar sound. So I'm gonna grab a guitar sound. And the other thing I'm gonna do specifically for this zone is go back to my mixer and turn some delay up for this zone.
me turn up the reverb for this zone. So you can start mixing, matching these things um, to, to your own liking. A uh, question from online, can you use more than one phrase as long as it's not drums? So each zone can use either uh, an arpeggiator or a phrase. So in this particular example, I've got zone ones using um, the drum pattern, the phrase. I'm actually using um, that drum pattern that I made, user 101. I didn't take the time to name it. Zones two and three, the arpeggiator's off. And zones four is that uh, guitar part we just made. <laughs> And that gives you an idea of how um, you can mix and match, again, uh, arpeggiators and phrases on different levels, on, on different zones. So, you know, again, uh, if you want to save everything we've created, what's cool is all the sounds, all the arpeggios, everything that we've done will be stored within the stage setting. So select stage setting, choose the location where you want to put it, uh, just out of... Um, completely random because I have some things loaded into some locations. I'm going to put it in location 8.7 and I can quickly go over here and you know name it um, something for tonight. So I'll tell you what, I will take this stage setting that I've just created and I'll upload it onto the forums uh, by tomorrow and you guys can download it and check it out yourself and make your own variations on this one. So there haven't been too many questions coming from the online group tonight. I had a, a little bit of an agenda, which was to show um, a little bit about stage settings, a little bit about the arpeggiator, and um, you know, also a little bit of hex edi editing. Um, so we've gotten through a few of those things. I'm going to open it up to some questions, and uh, you guys can um, ask away, and I'll do my address uh, best to... Um, to answer them. Can I explain the difference between the zone phrase and the common phrase? So, um, absolutely. Um, when we were developing, working on the PX5S, you know, one of the things that we um, discovered is that, you know, sometimes we don't want a drum pattern to, uh, or a phrase to, to start when we played the keyboard. Um, sometimes we just, we, we wanted it available. Uh, but we wanted to be able to uh, reach up and hit the start button rather than it triggering immediately uh, when we played the, the keyboard. So um, if you um, edit your stage setting and go to the common section, you can find right at the top, you know, a phrase. Um, again, I didn't take the time to name the phrase that I made, but that drum pattern that we were using is right there. So um, what I'm doing here is I've turned off zone one. Um, when I play the keyboard, my drum pattern is not playing because I turned zone one off. Um, however, now I can reach up and, st and start that phrase at any point in time uh, that I want. So. Uh, it's a great way to be able to bring in a drum pattern or a particular riff um, at any time. Uh, that common phrase will always be on zone one, channel one, or you know, whatever channel, uh, MIDI channel zone one is set to, but it's always going to be on zone one. So um, the next question that's coming up is regarding the EQ. And um, we'd have multiple EQs on the PX5S. There's um, an insert effect EQ. There's also a master EQ, which is global for all of the stage settings. Or not all the stage settings, but excuse me, all the sounds that are happening at once in a particular stage setting. So let's go back to, um, sorry, bumping the camera there, just our main concert grand here. Try and get that camera to focus. There it goes. So 
Uh, by default, the knobs up on the top left of the keyboard are assigned to control the master EQ. Um, so if you needed to make a quick change to the piano, um, you know, cut some low end, boost some high end, uh, you need something that's you know cutting or sitting in the mix a different way, um, you can make some quick changes to that. But the master EQ will affect all of the sounds that are going on at once. So um, the insert EQ or the DSP EQ, there's buttons right on the, um, sorry, wrong screen. Uh, there's a DSP button right there to the left, uh, bottom row, second button from the left, uh, labeled DSP. And that button allows you um, to, without going into edit mode, without um, you know scrolling down and choosing uh, the effects edit, you just press the DSP button and that will take you directly to the insert effect that is used for that sound. So if I were to dial in um, the equalizer here, that would allow me to shape the piano sound, in this case on zone 1, without changing any other sounds on zones 2, 3, or 4. So, um, which by the way, um, we are, uh, today is September 12th, um, I expect hopefully by tomorrow, Friday the 13th, uh, but in the very near future there's actually going to be a firmware update that addresses um, a few issues with that insert EQ uh, being recalled when you choose particular presets. So if you do use the, the insert EQ, um, currently uh, sometimes those EQs are being recalled and sometimes they're not. Um, so there'll be, there's actually going to be a version 1.11 that releases hopefully before the end of this week, but if uh, not, it'll be up very soon. So keep an eye on the support page at Casio.com um, and many of the other sites. I'm sure you will find more information about the upcoming firmware update. So other questions from the group, I'm going to do about five more minutes uh, and then call things uh, to a close. Uh, one of the things I wanted to, you know, while I'm waiting for questions to pop up, I know you guys are about 30 seconds behind me. Um, for you newbies, there's um, a lot of sounds to download at the CasioMusicForums.com. So, um, 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 including um, some great new Rhodes presets. There's many variations on that. Um, the you know Pink Floyd on the Run preset that we talked about earlier. Uh, so um, there's. Um, as of today, more than 110 different downloads available, and so far we've had nearly 5,500 downloads of those sounds. So lots of users up there taking advantage to uh, you know all the optional sounds that can be loaded into the PX5S. Uh, one of the other questions: um, Any plans for a mono mode in a future update? Um, other than you know some of the things that are going to happen in um, version 1.11, 1 uh, there are fixes to the EQs, and there's also um, some some improvements to the phrase recorder that we're using tonight. Um, for uh, when you have multiple phrases going, uh, there was um, there was a, a little bit of a bug in the overdub mode where it would add a little little bit of time and the loops weren't repeating smoothly so um, the EQ fixes the phrase fixes both of those things you're gonna find in version 1.1 1 .1. uh, as far as mono mode and, and other uh, wanted features I can't uh, I don't have any information on those at that time at this time and I can't I can't promise them as much as I would uh, I would like to so uh, fingers crossed but I just I don't have any information on that right now so, um, any other questions? Come on, Ustream. So, um, do check out those forums. If you're not already on Facebook, if you didn't find out about um, this clinic tonight through the uh, Facebook users group, um, and you're on Facebook, um, please do check out um, the Casio PX5S Facebook users group. There's over 300 users now. Um, seems to be actually the, the fastest place, since we're all socially connected these days, the fastest place for answers these days um, from Scott and Brad and many of the other um, guys and girls there that are, uh, you know, 
learning the PX5S. So everybody's sharing information. It's a great place to go if you have questions. Um, absolutely, I appreciate uh, the thank yous. You're ab you guys are absolutely welcome. You know, thank you guys for your interest, and for those of you that have already purchased the PX5S, uh, you know, thanks for um, uh, you know being early adopters to this instrument. You know, we're doing some uh, some new and different and uh, pretty amazing things with the PX5S, and um, you guys are are the first to take advantage of it. So, um, thank you very much for being an early adopter. And uh, you know we're going to continue to take care of you guys with fresh sounds, more clinics like these, and and lot of uh, additional support. So um, it doesn't doesn't do doesn't stop with what we've done so far. All right. Um, so um, I'm going to wrap things up. Um, you know, my name is Mike Martin. I think everybody here probably knows me at this point. Um, and I wanted to thank you all for in, you know joining us here on Ustream tonight, and uh, thank you for your questions. Thanks for again supporting the PX5S. So I look forward to seeing you guys at the next one, which we will probably do uh, within the next month. So I'm aiming at doing you know doing one of these a month. So please start making a list of questions that you didn't get answered tonight. Um, and you know we'll do our best to to get those answered uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, the Facebook link doesn't uh, doesn't come through directly. I'm sorry, the links are 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 censored for spam purposes apparently. So uh, if you're on Facebook, search for Casio PX5S, and you will definitely find it. So uh, I'm Mike Martin. I am signing off for tonight, and look forward to seeing you guys on our next clinic. Take care.